One billion dollars. That's the question. What would I do with one billion dollars? It seems like uh, uh, today uh, the, the, everybody's looking and focusing and thinking about the uh, lottery and uh, the uh, amount of money that's um, uh, on the table. It looks like there's a lot of money on the table with regards to the lottery. Uh, one billion dollars, as they say. So. I was just uh, just thinking about, you know, what would I do with a billion dollars? I, I really can't really say with any certainty what I would do with the billion dollars. Um, but it's just nice to kind of think about. I've seen all kind of people, uh, people's reactions and people's thoughts about infinite and their dreams and hopes and uh, some of the things that they uh, think they would do with a billion dollars. Um, I even seen one news, one live news clip where a guy, uh, you know, the, the news lady asked him, you know, what would you do with the billion dollars? And he pretty much said, uh, uh, I'll spend it on some hookers and some cocaine, some drugs, <laughs> drugs and hookers. Um, so uh, you, you're going to get it across, across the gamut as far as like what would people, somebody do with the million, a billion dollars? Um uh, one of the things that I've often heard with regard to, you know, uh, lotteries and uh, people who who come into a windfall of a lot of money uh, suddenly is that uh, they become a bigger person of what and who they they are as a person without. So if you're a good guy, if you're a nice woman, if if you're if you're a good personality, a righteous person with with nothing, then will you more than likely be the same with a lot? And vice versa, if you're a jerk or if you're just a not so happy person, not so good person without, when you get it, you'll just be a bigger version uh, of of that person that you are. Um, and that that's not to say that's 100 percent certainty, but uh, with regard to the statistics and just looking at some of the previous winners and the trends uh, with respect to lottery winners, uh, we can see that uh, there's, there's probably a lot of truth in that. Um, and that's a lot of lottery lottery uh, winners don't last too long as far as uh, the money that they get. Uh, they often end up worse off than what where they were. And a lot of times they end up dead. So um, it's probably better if you don't don't win a sudden amount of uh, a, a lot of money like a billion dollars. And I just think it's interesting that um, we're being distracted uh, today with a billion dollars. Uh, when we we're 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 in we we're on the brink of World War Three, I guess you could say, or World War Four, you know, uh, with Russia and and maybe drawn in China. Uh, right now we're fighting and we're we're in a lot of a uh, proxy skirmish skirmishes, I guess you could say, uh, with terrorist groups like ISIS, and then uh, with uh, uh, poking our uh, finger at Russia, trying to provoke them. If you look, at, if you kind of look at what's going on geopolitically, and um, just uh, what what else is going on, we the the war against the pocketbook is uh, quite clear and evident to me. Uh, when I'm looking, when I go grocery shopping, and I see uh, how it's uh, like two two hundred bucks for some ketchup and mustard, and uh, you know I ain't even got the meat yet, but you gonna you gonna charge me. Uh, three hundred bucks to get some Kool Aid, and I ain't got the sugar yet. What, what, what in the world is going on, y'all? Y'all changing up the packages on me, making them smaller, filling it up with more air, um, and I'm getting less product, and I gotta pay more for it. It looks good, but ain't nothing in it. It's just a package. Um, so the the war against the pocketbook is just quite interesting in looking at a lot of the dynamics. Uh, that's taking place. The war against the pocketbook is is going on. We we see in uh, the economy is kind of uh, and uh, not it's not doing so well in various places. Um, people are what I'm seeing uh, just with my own eyes and with my own experiences. Uh, I'm I'm seeing that a lot more people are spending a lot more time uh, working a lot harder, making less. You know, I see a lot of more more people struggling out there and trying to uh, make ends meet, um, uh, making less money is I, I don't know if it's just me. You know, maybe it's just me, but 
uh, some of the things I see, it just seems like uh, the middle class is uh, shrinking and the the the, the super rich is uh, um, becoming more segmented and isolated. It's uh, there's a term or phrase known as the breakaway society, and it, it looks as though the breakaway society is doing just that. Um, the rich are get you, getting richer and the poor or getting poorer and the middle class is being wiped out. It kind of reminds me of the book I, uh, um, Atlas Shrugged by uh, uh, author Ayn Rand. It was written by, back in the early uh, 19th century in which, he, you know, it's, it's a fictional story, but uh, there's there's a lot, true, a lot of truth in my view with regard to uh, some of the main themes that's, that's, that can be found in it. One of them being that... Uh, uh, by design, we see that the economy is becoming a trap. A, a trap is being set through d- uh, uh, designed and planned implosions uh, in, in manipulation in the economy to enslave and trap and to uh, cage a population, the masses, so that they can be ruled over in a neo, a new uh, world order or a neo um, feudalism in which you have nothing but a bunch of peasants being ruled by a few elite. Um, you may say, Kevin, that's, you know, that's uh, conspiracy talk and that uh, whatever. But uh, let me tell you, they, they, you could find this, this idea, it uh, weaves itself all through history. Um, ever since uh, the days of Noah and before and after. And so this idea of man, humanity, has been struggling with it uh, ever since the beginning of time. The, the uh, struggle between good and evil, the struggle between enslavement and total freedom. So with with uh, respect to that, um, don't don't get distracted by dreams and fantasizations, uh, the fantasizing of having one billion dollars, because uh, with all due respect, you know, I don't have a billion dollars, but I would love to. Um, it's just that, you know, a billion dollars really is it's, uh, it sounds good, but it, it's not really going to take you too. It'll take you far. But um, even in my view, you know, I'd love to have it. It's It's good to think about. But uh, I guess bigger questions would be like, why, how would the lottery even be able to get that far? And then also look at inflation. Look at uh, it. It, all, it also reminded me of um, it just in thinking about it. Uh, Proverbs 11 and one, a false balance is a is abomination to the Lord, but a just weight is his delight. And I was thinking about that billion dollars and I was thinking about the economy that the billion dollars is based on the foundation of this billion dollars and it and it brought me back to the uh, documentary of uh, the creature from Jackal Island uh that which is based on the book written by G Edward Griffin and he documents with uh uh, uh great uh, minuteness he do- he documents well uh the foundation of uh, our uh current economy and the Federal Reserve System and how things operate. And when you look at it, it's it the whole basis is based on debt. It's based on corruption. It's based on uh, a false balance. It's not based on anything that's of real substance. Um, so when you have a debt based economy, it, you, you you're always in debt. It, <laughs> you never really get out of debt. Who was it, it, it? When you think about it. So that means that, uh, you know, they used to say, you know, I used to think I used to ask questions and be like, well, you know, what about inflation and uh, how the price is always rising? And it's like, when does it stop? It's like it never really stopped. It's like it just keeps going to the values to the value of the dollar it is at zero. And in our in our day and time, we could see that the value of the dollar is almost at zero. Um so, so you know, just looking at that, you know, a billion dollars is, is, is it can evaporate in in no time. It can evaporate. It could just disappear. 
So really what you want to do is you want to think about uh, getting real substance, real wealth, doing that. Fantasize about that. But I digress. Don't let me go too far off. You know, just let me, I'm going to ask my, I ask myself a question. What would I do with a billion dollars? What would I do? What would you do with a billion dollars? What would you do with a billion dollars, really? And I, I was just thinking about that. And I guess I would do, I guess I would do three things. Uh, just kind of just talking off the top of my head. I really hadn't uh, sketched anything out for this show. I'm just kind of just putting my thoughts out there and just kind of seeing who it resonates with. But a billion dollars, I would get myself, I would, I would get myself free first and i would free myself in as many ways as possible uh for first and foremost i would uh, i would uh donate and be charitable i would do i would tithe it and i would do an offering secretly um not let anybody know where it came <laughs> you know just kind of like hey um i'm gonna donate this i want to pay my tithes and offering and um you know, it doesn't even have to be that I, I play the lottery, but just just say I had a windfall of a billion dollars on my bank account tomorrow. I would, you know, I be, would be charitable. I would uh, choose some charitable organizations to donate to. Uh, that's number one right off the top. And then, I, like I said, I would get myself free. I would get myself as healthy as I possibly can. That means, man, I would, I would go all out. Whatever it takes to get myself 100% in shape and uh, capable and able and functional uh, to uh, uh, live a, a vibrant and a, a joyful and a, a good life, I would do it. All the top research and science and all the top scientists and all that kind of stuff, I would seek all that out. Whatever y'all got in these secret labs, I want it. Like, give me some of it. Uh, just like in the movie Seth Less, if that that's a movie that just came out on Redbox, and me and my sons we watched it, where you know a, a very rich man he he got he got his youth back. Um, I, the way he did it wasn't good, but you know I, I would be like, what's the safest and what's the most uh, uh, integ you know way of, of integrity to really what what kind of life extension technologies that y'all got out there? I would seek all that out, and and I would use it for good. Uh, I would try to be like a Tony Starks, I guess you could say, a better Tony Starks or a, even a, a Black Panther, um, using my wealth uh, to uh, for the, the good of humanity. But first off, I would, like I said, I would get myself right. And and once I did that, I would do for my family. I would uh, provide for my, my kids and, and those attached to me. I would give them the best education, give them the best food, give them the best, the best of the best. I would uh, leave a legacy for my, um, I would put some money in the trust, I guess you could say, and leave a legacy for not only my, my kids, my grandkids, and my great-grandkids, but my great-great-great-grandkids. I would leave a legacy for them, set something up for them. I, I would start thinking long-term in, in 50, 100, 200 Three hundred year terms, four hundred year terms. I would I would plan. I would uh, put a, uh, a mastermind group together or a you uh, um a round table group together. I guess you could say and and uh, kind of formulate some things with uh, my family and then also for my community. So it, I would I would I would uh, invest in my community and. And try to come up with some programs and some things that uh, that would be uplifting for the the immediate community that I live in. Um, so, you know, that's some broad uh, paintbrush, a little broad overview. Uh, three things that I would do with a if I had happened to come into a windfall of one million billion dollars, and I would do all this secretly. I would do this so that uh, you know nobody knew what where this stuff came from or who supplied it. Nobody needs to know. Um, so that's what I would do with a billion dollars, to be honest. I mean, it's just a billion dollars would buy you some time. It, that's that's what it would do. So use it for what it is. I would invest in, I would invest in land. Uh, I would invest in people. I would invest in uh, uh, 
uh, precious metals. I would invest in a uh, in um, self defense, having my own little private uh, self defense firm and, or, or organization. I mean, I, I would really go all out. I, I, I'd, I'd, um, at least I think I would anyway. That's what I would do. I would try to build something to uh, help uh, provide jobs for my community. Um, so that's what I would do with a billion dollars. Um, like I said, it's it's. It's just money is nothing more than a tool, and, and we need we have to constantly be reminded of that of that that uh, money is not worth dying for, it is not worth killing for, it is not worth uh, sacrificing more time than you have to for it. It is not. It's just it's just a tool that can provide you with the options of uh, a lot of answer. Uh, you know. It can, it can answer a lot of things, so to speak, and it can provide you with a lot of options, but it's not everything as the world would have you believe. So don't uh, don't get caught up in the hype and don't clamor and uh, get too caught up in the, the fantasizing of a billion dollars in your pocket, because just with looking at the economy that we live in and uh, the way things are going, it's just it's not all that it's cooked up to be. Um, if anything, get your priorities, you know, get your priorities in order and, uh, don't focus on the billion dollars, but focus on what, what's really of value, which is your time. Your time is finite. Your, your effort, your, your strength, uh, your blood, sweat, tears. These are things that is finite. Your relationships. These are things that, uh, you know, quote unquote, don't cost too much, but they are priceless. These are things that uh, when you invest in them, the return on your investment is uh, exponential. The return on your investment cannot be uh, measured. Uh, it, the, you know, you sow, you sow to the wind and reap the whirlwind, so to speak. Uh, um, so what you put with the little that you put out, the return is going to be uh, far greater than what you expected. It could be good and that can be good or bad. You know, you get what you um you know, karm, uh, you know, seed time and harvest will always be. That's a principle we cannot forget. So every every decision we make is a seed, and it does come back. And uh, oftentimes, when we when we make bad or negative decisions, the price that we pay is more than uh, we were willing to pay. You know, in the beginning. So that that's just the way it is. And also, we reap more than what we uh, sowed in. That's the that's the point of investing. So um, we we, we want to be uh, mindful of uh, our priorities with respect to to our um, uh, money and time and energy and effort with today's in today's time. Don't allow the world to distract you uh, from the bigger issues that are taking place, like uh, our economy and and how it's not it's not all that it's cooked up to be and that uh, it is uh being manipulated and influenced and 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 puffed up as you know and whatever magic tricks that can be pulled out out the bag at the moment um and it's just a matter of time so to speak uh, before the debt that this nation is in uh reaches a point in which it has to it will be it uh, it will collapse or it, it, you know tomorrow we don't who knows what tomorrow holds so you know just be mindful live you know and I'm, i don't want this to be a negative show or one of hopelessness because i do want to encourage you to encourage you and leave you with hope and that no matter what happens in the economy no matter when the rug is pulled as long as you are uh hidden in christ as long as you put your faith and trust in the creator the almighty um, you know, you can have total peace. Um, you, you may not be making all the right decisions, but, uh, as long as you, uh, put your faith and trust in, 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 uh, Christ and the almighty, and you seek to do the best that you can do, um, don't lose hope. And, uh, he, he will take care of his own no matter what. Um, that's, that's one thing about God and that, uh, he will take care of you no matter what. Uh, you know, the birds, his eyes always on the sparrow. Uh, so if he takes care of the sparrow, what do you think he's going to do for you? He'll take care of you. Just keep your trust in him and you, and you just do the best that you can and let him do the rest. 
of uh, of that that that's that thing that situation that stuff that you can't do so that's that's the way he likes it he likes it to, to be um well he's never going to give you more that you can that you can bear but he likes to give you just enough that you have to uh, lean on him because he, he loves you that much he's like i you know I, I, let me take care of you i'm your man i'm the one just let me take care of you this is what i do i love taking care of uh, I love I love to love. I love to share. That's what love does. You know, it's, the, the Bible says that God is love and love loves to share just because that's what it does. Love loves to care. Love loves to create. It loves to give. It loves to take care of. It loves to provide for. There, that's, that's how love knows to do. Um, so if anything, I want to leave you with hope to uh uh, seek um, him with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. Place your trust in him. And uh, don't worry about the billion dollars or whether you win the lottery or not. Uh, but uh, you you always, as um, uh, long as you have favor with uh, the creator, that's worth more than a billion dollars. You know, that that's, that's priceless to be in good standing with the creator and uh, to have a relationship that you know, that you know, that you know. So, um, if anything, seek him with all your heart, soul, and mind, and with your body and your strength, and develop a relationship with him, uh, uh, abide in him, so to speak, and uh, no matter what comes, no matter what storms or anything comes your way, uh, you you know that uh, you can handle it, you can get through it, you can uh, be encouraged, be full of hope, Um that's all I really want to kind of say to you today. This is this is Kevin over at jkevinjohnson.com. That is the letter J, kevinjohnson.com with no spaces in between. You can find me over there. Find some articles over there of hope, encouragement, love, uh, entertainment. Uh, just a, a place, uh, an oasis that you can go to just to get some, uh, re- get, get some uh, words that uh, will help you along the way. Um, don't be afraid to drop a comment uh, don't be afraid to come in and uh, donate with us and uh, partner up with us and help us fund this operation because I cannot operate uh, uh, at this. I cannot do this without your help, without your help. Um, so just wanted to speak a little words of encouragement and hope with you today and kind of fantasize with you about that billion dollars uh and uh yes you better believe i would be taking some vacations if i did win that billion dollars you would find me or not find me uh, lo- uh relocating often <laughs> uh for a year or so just kind of bouncing around traveling the world enjoying what i see with my family and uh just kind of uh, uh living history i guess you could say on a personal basis so uh, yeah, I would have a little fun with that money um, as far as like doing other stuff with it. Um, so don't get caught up in the hype. And uh, just uh, enjoy your life as it is now. Be content now. Um, so with that, this is Kevin over at jkevinjohnson.com. Just want to talk to you for a little bit and uh just kind of get some things off my chest thank you for joining me i look forward to uh talking to you all later and uh shalom may the may his face shine upon you and give you peace and and all the good stuff <laughs>